Good evening, everyone. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting laws requirement that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public. So long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 9. Um, you can also access it through the YouTube link slash the Brockton channels. Um, I'm just gonna take a roll call to see if we have quorum. Um, Cynthia rivas Mendes here. Tony Rodriguez. Here. And Thomas Minicello not here yet. All right, the agenda for today, um, Tuesday, January 19th, 2021, um, starting at 5.35 p.m. is one, the update on executive director hiring and next steps for our diversity, equity, and inclusion office. Number two will be our student panel questionnaire. We're here visited by many students from the Brockton Public Schools. And then number three would be other business. So we'll start with the update on executive director hiring and next step by Kathy Moran. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. And thanks. It's so good to see everybody tonight. And it's great to have so much interest in this position. Um, I'll just give you a quick update. The job ad for the um, Executive Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion closed as of today. It was posted internally, which goes out to all employees in the Brockton Public Schools by email. It was also posted on SchoolSpring, which is a paperless applicant tracking system that we tend to use um, for positions like this in the school department. And it was also posted in the Enterprise and the Globe, um, the paper copies and online. Um, so the process that we've discussed so far and this um, will be updated as we get some more feedback is first what we want to do is create a rubric that we use to review all of the applicants that have come in. There are certain criteria that are um, preferred and some that are required. So we'll go through all of the applications that come in um, and determine which ones fit the criteria, the minimum qualifications and the criteria. And then those will be the names that we move forward to the actual, actual, the actual interview phase. Um, once we have that list of applicants um, who will receive in interviews, we were discussing having three rounds of interviews at approximately 15 minutes each. Um, and in no particular order, the groups would be made up, first group would be made up of members of the executive team and they are people like um, Ms. Wolder, the superintendent, myself and other executive directors in the district. Uh, and also a representative from the human resources office. Since I'm the human resources director, I'll be the rep for that group. Um, then we'll have another group that's made up of district administrators, which will include principals, assistant principals, associate principals, department heads, coordinators, the people who are administrators within the district. And that will also include some teachers, uh, members of the school committee and another representative from the human resources department. And then the third group will include community members, members of families and um, students who are currently in the Brockton Public Schools and um, also a, not a different rep from the Human Resources Office. And we're hoping that we can create that schedule. <clears throat> excuse me, create that schedule. <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, create that schedule and then have that reviewed um, in the next week or two. As I said, the job ad closed today and we wait for um, tomorrow morning in case any more, <coughs> excuse me, applications are mailed in. Thanks. Thank you. Are you okay, Kathy? I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> Too much talking. <laughs> All right, so um, anybody have any questions on the executive director hiring and next steps? All right, I think we're all set then. So I wanted to introduce the student panel questionnaire that we have today and give a chance to Sharon Walder as well if she wants to say anything before. But when we started the subcommittee, one of the biggest things that we thought was gonna be the most relevant was to have community members and students of our school because they are the 
um, they are the best resource we have in collecting data and really being able to see what do we need to improve and how to move towards change. So today we have um, a student panel. Um, students will introduce themselves by giving their name. They will give what school they're currently enrolled in, in Brockton, and one fun fact about themselves. Um, Sharon, I don't know if you wanted to add anything. I, I just want to say this, you know, this is really exciting to have this opportunity for students to come and actually speak to school committee members in this capacity. So I appreciate this committee for um, paving the way for that kind of conversation to take place. I also want to point out that though the students who are here tonight are Brockton High School students only, we do have students from Champion High School who participate on the, the, the with the group that we meet with uh, on days. However, because of scheduling, they weren't able to be here and that uh, Edison Academy will also have students participating in the future. So uh, as people are watching, especially students, uh, this, is the, this is the space where we're asking for your voices to be heard. So you're welcome to reach out and um, I would definitely be willing to connect with those students, have conversations with them about this work and get them connected to the work that you're doing as well. So I just wanted to put that out there because people will see Brockton High and think it's only for Brockton High, that that's not the case. Thank you for that clarification. Um, so why don't we start, um, I'm gonna start with, um, so again, you're gonna state your name, the school that you're currently in and one fun fact about yourself. So why don't we start with Song? Hi everyone, my name is Song Similian. Um, I'm currently enrolled at Brockton High School, and one fun fact about me is that I'm Haitian. Okay, we'll continue with Fetcher. Hi, my name is Fetcher Tulin, and um, I go to Brockton High. And a uh, fun fact about me is I'm the oldest out of three kids. Rakeem. Hello, my name is Rakim Johnson. Uh, I'm a junior at Brockton High School, and a fun fact about me is that I'm in the senior jazz band. Um, I see Anthony. Hi, my name is Anthony Montron, and I'm a student in Brockton High School, and one fun fact about me, I've been out of the United States to England multiple times. Ayana? Hi, my name is Ayanna Blake. Um, I'm a sophomore at Brockton High. Um, and a fun fact about me is that um, I'm a sci-fi nerd. Maureen. My name is Maureen Alexandre. I go to Brockton High and a fun fact about me is I like to write. Um, Sharncia. Now. Hello, everyone. My name is Sharncia Jonas Saint. I go to Brockton High School. I'm a junior. And a fun fact about me is I'm in concert choir at Brockton High School. Thank you. Did I miss anybody? Okay. So the first question we'll start with. Again, you don't need to answer all questions. I don't. I don't think Rakim was introduced. Yeah, he was. Oh, he was. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I'll start with the first question. Again, you can answer to all the questions or questions that you specifically find that you really want to answer. So the first one is, what is one thing you like about school? And you can raise your hand and I can see it that way. Do you know how to use the raise hand feature? Okay, perfect. So why don't we start with song? I think one thing that I like about school right now is um, being able to wake up a little bit later than I usually did because I would have to be awake by like five o'clock to catch the bus and get ready. But like being virtual allows me to sleep in a little later and wake up later. So I get more energy throughout the day. All right, I'm gonna call you in the order that I see you on the screen, Fetcher. Sorry about that. 
But um, uh, what was the question? It was. What is oh, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I like about school is just the social aspect of it because, like, without school, I feel like um, a lot of people wouldn't be able to interact the way they do. You know, we learn a lot of that in school. Those. Um, interactions. So um, I think that's my favorite part, just getting to meet new people, new personalities. And um, especially at Brockton High with how many, like, with how diverse it is, um, I just uh, love meeting new people. Ayana? Um, for me, right now, specifically with school, I enjoy um, how much easier it is to connect with your teachers in a virtual setting um, and get help that you need. Um, before, um, it was a lot about scheduling and rides and other things, but it's much easier online to just message your teacher and be like, um, hey, can we set up a meeting for 15 minutes to go over this because I didn't get it. Um, so I think it, it makes it much easier to get help um, and less intimidating too because you're kind of behind a screen. Akeem? Um, one thing that I like about school, um, to piggyback off what Ayana said, um, I really enjoy the fact that my teachers are more willing to try new things um, and revise old methods. Um, that makes it a lot more engaging. Um, and a lot of times they ask us how we would like to learn, which I think is really helpful. And Marie. One thing I enjoy about school is being behind the camera and not having to get up and get ready and be stressed about my hair or what I wear. So I really do enjoy that part about school right now. All right, thank you. So the second question is, what is one thing you think needs to improve or one thing you wish were different? And I see Ra Rakem, right? It's Rakim or Rakem? It's Rakim. Rakim, thank you, sorry for that. No worry, thank you for asking. No way. Um, so for me, uh, I think that we can improve on how we address um, behavioral concerns, and I use the word concerns uh, deliberately, um, uh, in the school system. Um, we have a very heavy focus on punitive punishment. I mean, if I think if we moved closer towards uh, rehabilitative measures and uh, restorative justice practices. Um, I think we would have better outcomes when it comes to um, behaviors that are not necessarily uh, ideal in our student body. And you've seen that, what are the, inv the involvement that you have in school that you've seen that in particular? Um, for me, at least, I see that when uh, students have a disagreement within within like the student body or um, with teachers. Um, the first thing that is usually done is to give some sort of punishment rather than try to find the root of the problem. Um, and I think that that doesn't really solve the problem. That kind of just perpetuates feelings of upsetness, and uh, it's not really good. Hey, um, Ayana. Um, so one thing why, that I think could be improved upon is that um, there doesn't seem to be, there's not a set way for students to respectfully um, self-advocate. Um, I feel a lot of the times when an issue happens between a student um, and a teacher specifically, um, there's not a channel for them to go through to express that. Um, so like, for example, as a student, I know that if I have an issue with another student, I should report it, write it up, speak to my assistant dean, my teachers. I know how to handle that situation. But if I have a situation with another teacher, um, I don't, a lot of students don't know what to do with that. Um, and, and while it may be rare, there are still times where there is an issue that students need to bring to light. Um, and when there, was, if there isn't a secure and obvious and known channel to go through, it creates this discomfort where students feel like they don't have a voice um, and students are suffering in silence. Um, so I think just creating in the same sense that I know that when I have an issue with a student, um, that I need to go to my assistant dean or I need to write it up so that there's a record of it, there should be that same kind of situation with teachers. So students don't have to rely on going to parents or venting to other teachers to self-advocate for themselves. Thank you. Rakem, I see that you have your hand up again. Oh, sorry. sorry, I meant to put it down. No worries. Um, 
anybody else or is that all for I would, question? I don't know where that hand raise button is. I don't see it on the screen, but I would also like to implement something. And one thing that I think we need to be improved for more online school is student participation because throughout the majority of my classes, maybe there's a, there's a few of my classes where basically all students participate and speak to the teacher if help is needed. But in some of my uh, CPA classes, there are students that are struggling with the work, but are I believe are maybe too afraid over class to ask for help. And maybe they ask behind the teacher. I don't know personally, but I feel students should be able to speak freely to the teacher without being scared of what other students are going to think. Because it doesn't necessarily matter what other students think about them, but more about they should focus on their own self and ask for help if it's ever needed. So kind of like teachers creating a safe space where students feel like they can participate and ask for help. Is that what you do? Okay, thank you. Um, if there's nobody else, I'm gonna move to the third question. Okay, all right. Oh, sorry, Fetcher, I see your hand. Yeah, I was just gonna mention something that we usually talk about in the other meetings um, and that's like more diversity between the teachers, among the teachers. Um, and I say that because uh, I feel like a lot of students would feel a lot more comfortable, not even with just more African-American teachers, but teachers of many different cultures, um, teaching them in class. And I think, it would, I think it would be very helpful and make a big improvement in students. Thank you. Ayana? I'd just like to um, agree with Fetcher on that point. Um, I've only ever had one um, like teacher that was African American. Um, I've only had like a teacher teacher. Like uh, there are um, like floor teachers that you see. Um, sometimes there are um, guidance counselors. Um, but an actual teacher that um, was teaching through the year, I've only ever had one. Um, and I will admit that the experience was different. It's hard to put into words, but I think it, it simply comes down to feeling like you can relate to the person better and the person understands you. Um, and I feel like that diversity is important. Um, and that's across the scale, as Fetcher was saying, not just with um, POCs, but um, other cultures and races as well. Um, just having a more diversified teaching staff um, opens um, new windows for students to see into other cultures and experiences. Um, and I think it's important for um, everyone to be able to see themselves in teachers um, or it makes it difficult to learn from them. Sharncia? I don't know how to use the raise hand feature, so sorry. But um, I also think what needs improvement is like the, the aid of being able to help students with their mental health. Because also during a time like this, where, where we are behind the screen for eight hours is not going well for us whatsoever. I, I do understand how some students like the aspect of being behind a screen and not ac actually having to get up and go interact with other people. But for me personally, I am a social butterfly. I love to be around other people. I can't just be around the screen like all the time. And especially with all the work that's also being handed out. I mean, I know as a junior, I'm like juniors, junior year is the hardest year. And I know that I'm going to get a ton, ton and load of work. But also, we're also in a pandemic. The only place I am or the only place I can go is either work or my house. I feel as if being behind a screen for seven days, well, not seven days, um, how many school days is it? Like five days? Five days, <laughs> five days a week for eight hours. That's not going to go well for my brain and my physical well being. If I'm either, like just behind the screen with my camera off. Well, I mean, of course my camera should be on, but with the feeling of it just being like this, it's not, you know, like it's not going to go well with how I am learning. And also m m like many students are hands-on learners, like they need to be 
taught where it's either after school one-on-one -on -one, or either they need to like have it written on a board and sometimes when like the teachers are teaching something's going wrong with the computer or either the students not listening or the students just sleeping and not knowing what's going on that's not like that's not going to you know help the students I feel as if sometimes it should be sometimes I wish that it's like self-paced kind of as if like if we have a system where we're able to do the work like we have a deadline but we're able to do the work on our own time without feeling as if we're rushed or like we have like oh my gosh I have all this to do I have all this to do I feel as if if it was self-paced it would be much better for the kids and their mental health. Thank you. Um, Marie? Something else I feel like should be improved is kind of like the teacher's support, you know, because sometimes like you might go to the teacher, reach out online or like through email and you ask them like, what happened today? Or like, I need help on what happened today in class. And they're just like, it was repeated in class multiple times, or it was stated like this, or it was stated like that, you know, like sometimes like, the teacher might give attitude or like they might not mean it that way, but it comes out that way. So the kid is kind of just like, no, I don't want to reach out to her anymore. And they kind of feel like they can't reach out to their teacher to talk about things like that. And like Shantia said, everything is like asynchronous. Every day is asynchronous, asynchronous, asynchronous. I like to work on like hands on. I like to talk to my friends while I work, you know, so I feel like being able to talk with our friends and like not having to do everything asynchronous would be well and it would be like a better learning environment for everybody because sometimes like you fall asleep behind the camera or you're just not paying attention. So I feel like working with your friends, you know, it would be better. Son? I was gonna say that um, I also agree with Shantia, like it's kind of hard to have motivation to do like classwork or to like, it's kind of hard to focus in class. So I feel like having the teachers check up on us every once in a while goes like a really long way. Cause I feel like just venting about your problems, like just telling someone how you're feeling after like a, a night of like no sleep, or if you're not like doing the best with your mental health, I feel like just talking to someone, it, it really does go a long way. So if the teachers could check up on us like every once in a while, I feel like we would be more dedicated to like the work and like, more like inclined to do it, I guess. Ayana? I just wanna um, add on with my own experience here. I pretty much agree with everybody, um, but I also would like to point out that as a whole, um, and what I hear from my own friends is that a lot of the teachers are doing that. Um, personally, I'm the first to admit that I am not caught up in every class right now. I can't even pretend or tell that lie. Um, and I, I would consider myself a good student, um, but this has been really difficult for me. Um, the motivation is lacking. Um, and a lot of the activities that we would do in class, um, that social aspect of like working in groups and working with your team and playing games together and going up to the board is kind of gone. And it just makes it hard to um, engage when you're kind of just listening to someone talk at you um, from the other side of the screen. But I do feel like a lot of teachers um, are making an effort to reach out to students and ask them what's going on. I've got messages from teachers. Um, I also, my guidance counselor will check in every once in a while. And I feel like if you go to any teacher, um, you can get the support. Um, I feel like it's a lot of um, going that extra step. There's always that, like, there's always one teacher who, um, there's always, like, one or two teacher Well, you'll say something, and they'll be a little frustrated, like, I kind of said this in class, um, and I asked if you had a question, and it comes down to the fact that I'm that kid that doesn't want to ask the question in class, because I feel kind of dumb, because I know that she said it, and she explained it, but I didn't get it, um, so I feel like it comes down to a lot of personal stuff as well, and so it's just kind of like this complicated balance that I think everyone is just trying to figure out. Um, so I don't, th it, I don't think it's anybody's fault. And I think it's just something students and teachers alike are kind of working together. Um, yeah. Dr. you still have your hand up. Did you want to add anything? 
Oh, no, that's my bad. I forgot to put it down. Okay. All right. So for that question, um, do we have anybody else that would like to add? Okay, we can move to the third question. Do you feel you have a voice? Why or why not? All right, San? I honestly think it depends on the issue because I remember a survey going around um, with the, uh, the MCAS question, if we thought we were, we should have MCAS this year or not. And I'm one of the students who think we shouldn't because um, Switching to virtual was like really difficult for me. I feel like it's a lot harder to stay focused and a lot harder to learn. And I feel like if I were to have MCAS at the end of the year, like it wouldn't actually reflect on my on my year, like the year that I had. Cause I passed in my assignments and like I do what needs to be done in order to pass my classes. But if I were to have MCAS, like I just feel like I wouldn't get a good grade because I wouldn't remember what I was learning throughout the year. Um, I definitely like personally I definitely feel like I have a voice especially in the situation you know I'm in right now being able to talk to you guys about you know the problems and everything I feel like I have a voice um but to to the normal student I feel like they might not feel like they do um maybe because they may think that um, the teacher or whoever they want to speak to may not listen to them or anything like that. But me personally, I feel like I have a voice. Maureen? Um, to add on to that, I feel like I have a voice in this group. Like, I feel like what I'm saying right now, there will be change, you know? But maybe I won't see it for the kids that are coming up after us. They probably will see it. So, yes, I do have a voice here. But I feel like in school, no, I don't feel like I have a choice. I mean, a voice because I can say things repeatedly over and over again. And I feel like it's not changing or it might change for a day or two. And then it goes back to the same old thing that was happening before. So it's kind of a yes and a no. Rakim? Um, so for me personally, I think that um, it's a mixed bag in terms of whether or not I have a voice. Um, I feel like a lot of the times when I'm asked for my opinion, um, the action itself does seem performative. I don't feel like my opinion is valued a lot of times. I don't feel as though um, my input is being considered or used. Um, but I do think that there are opportunities if you seek them out to have a voice. Um, so I think that in that regard, I do have a voice. But I also wish that um, these opportunities would be more so presented to me rather than having to have me go look for them. Um, because I think that everyone should have a voice within uh, our school and our district rather. So when you said seek out to have a voice, what are ways that you have seeked out that has worked out where you're able to express yourself? Um, so I would say that I have a pretty good relationship with my guidance counselor. And I often ask him, is there any uh, groups or programs that I can join where I can make a difference um, in my community? Uh, I'm also in a leadership program called C5. Um, and through my involvement with them, I'm able to find and ask for opportunities to uh, present my opinion on my community and help try to make it a better place. Okay. Ayana? So I, I pretty much agree with um, what has been said before. Um, there's a difference between, I think, speaking and being heard. Um, I'm not a quiet person. <laughs> um, so I, I do feel like um, in certain situations like this one, I have a voice. Um, I always have a voice. I'm always speaking. Um, but like um, Rakeem said, a lot of the time you have to make yourself heard um, rather than have people listen to you. Um, and what I mean by that is if I have a problem or I have a concern that I want to voice, I have to go and advocate for myself. 
Um, so if there is an issue, I have to go to my um, assistant dean or um, someone in admin and be like, okay, so this is a problem that's happening. Um, I don't really know how to fix it, um, but I have an idea. Can we talk about this? And you kind of have to, but um, it's kind of intimidating to do that a lot of the time um, to kind of just walk up to someone who's in charge and be like, hey, so there's the problem. Um, and I see the problem. I'm not the only one with the problem and I want to see if maybe we can fix it. Um, and that's, that's like what I was saying before. There isn't, there doesn't seem to be a channel in which students can openly and easily self-advocate. Um, and it becomes frustrating because we're constantly being told that we are young adults, um, and that we're going to college soon and we're going to have to be speaking for ourselves. Um, and yet a lot of the times it feels like we are not given the opportunity to do so. Um, you have to be willing to push to be heard rather than it feels like have people willing to listen to you. Um, if that makes any sense. Does anybody want to add to that question? I wanted to add that I feel as if I have a voice to a certain extent. Like I feel as if I have a voice if I speak to the right people if anyone understands what I'm trying to say. But um, like Rakim said, he's in C5, I'm in Upward Bound. And it's also a very great program. Like it's a program that's helped me out with so many things. And I feel as if, if programs like that were offered to all students, cause I talked to someone else or one of my other friends and they'd be like, no, I've never heard of that. Like, oh my gosh, I wish I've joined that my freshman year. And I feel as if like these opportunities aren't presented to everyone when they should be so that they can have a voice and seek out opportunities that are being handed out for free that every student in Brockton should have or be able to reach. All right, so the fourth question, it's a little loaded. Um, so it's the article, how teachers of color can make a difference in the classroom and beyond by Jason Morametti states, research suggests that students of color who have at least one teacher of color may do better on tests and be less likely to have disciplinary issues. Research also suggests that white students show improved problem solving, critical thinking and creativity when they have diverse teachers. What do you think about this or how does it connect to your academic slash personal life? All right, Ayan, I see your hand up already. <laughs> um, we mentioned, I know someone else said it and I piggybacked off though I'm not, I don't remember exactly who, but we mentioned it before when we were talking about things that we change. As I said before, I've only ever had um, one African-American teacher that I learned from. And like I said, I can attest to there being a sort of um, difference. It's easy to find a mentor in that. It's easy to connect to that and I don't know, um, specifically, the teacher that I had was an elder African American woman. So for me, it was automatically like, okay, like in, in my culture specifically, um, I'm Haitian, the way you treat your elders a certain way. Um, and so specifically when I was presented with someone who um, I could easily identify and relate to um, my family and my culture, I, I don't, I feel like their relationship was different. Um, I feel like I automatically connected with that teacher um, easier. Um, and I could talk to them about things that I couldn't necessarily talk to um, with my other teachers, things that they would automatically understand, like little things like my hair when I um, change it. Um, I don't have to explain what it is to that teacher. They know and they change their hair too. And we can talk to that about that and I can relate to them. And I feel like there's someone who understands what I have been through without me having to necessarily spell it out for them. Um, especially when there were conversations going around um, about diversity, because I feel like that's come up a couple of times in the last two years. Um, it's different having that conversation with a teacher of color than it is to have um, with a teacher who is not. Um, and I really do think that diversity is important no matter your race or religion or whatever, because I feel like, um, again, I think it's a standard that the school system has um, windows and mirrors 
that in a schoolroom, in a classroom, in a school, you should be able to um, have windows to see out into other cultures and other experiences and other peoples, but also have mirrors so that you can see yourself in the people around you. Um, kind of like a give and take, take like, like a balance. Um, and I feel like diversifying um, the teaching staff um, plays a big part in that. Thank you, Anthony. I feel that having more diverse teachers, I'm going to agree with Diana, is going to help benefit the students because some students can connect with the teachers and talk about personal things that they can't really do with other students, I mean, other students and teachers. I feel that more diverse teachers will help benefit the education system, especially in Rockton High, since it's already such a diverse community. And that, um, It'll just be overall a great, helpful thing. Because I had myself a few diverse teachers, and I have been able to connect with them. I haven't lost touch with them still with middle school and now in high school and ninth grade. And it's actually still pretty fun to communicate with them, touch up with them, how they've been going over the pandem uh, pandemic and how they've been overall health. McKen? So I think that having teachers of color is really, really important. And it's something that I'm personally passionate about. Um, representation is really important, especially, especially uh, uh, for young African-American people, um, because a lot of the, a lot of the depictions uh, that we see of people that look like us in media and um, on the news are not positive depictions. So having like positive role models to look at is instrumental. Um, I think that I can attest to having, or the importance and benefit of having uh, teachers of color around me. Uh, I necessarily didn't have this teacher um, myself, but he was an active member of our school community in middle school. Um, and that, that teacher was, for me was Mr. Howard. Um, and a lot of the lessons that he taught us uh, were in the things that he said and how he carried himself. Um, and I think that every student within Brockton, uh, regardless of race or ethnicity, should have that opportunity to have a teacher that looks like them and share some of the same experiences that they have uh, gone through. Ayana, I see your hand raised again. Um, I just realized that there was a perfect example right here in the call, Miss Walder. Um, I met Miss Walder when I was in middle school. Um, in my school, I think that there were, I think there was one, teacher, actual teacher of color. And then I believe that there was a guidance counselor and then the program that I am in, um, its director was a POC. So that made a total of like three or four um, teachers that I knew of in my entire middle school. Um, I met Ms. Walder um, through this program um, and I was immediately um, excited. Um, she was one of the first um, women of color that I had seen um, in kind of like a leadership role um, in, she immediately kind of became a, man, a mentor for me. Um, I fell out of contact with her for a little bit um, before I came back to the group, but I never really forgot about her. Um, she was always kind of like an important memory for me. And I have a, I only have a couple of teachers like that in my history. Um, and she was kind of like a role model to me. And it's a little thing, I only met her like once or twice and we had a couple of conversations, but it made a big difference for young me because it gave me something to look up to. I decided I want, I kind of want to be like her. I think she's cool. Um, I like that about her. Oh, that was cool that she said that. Um, I heard that she used to do this. Oh, she was the principal at Brockton High School. Maybe I'll be a teacher. Um, she, was a, she was a role model and I, she became a role model because I could relate to her. Um, so just, I thought that was a cool example. And I just realized she was right there. Sharon <laughs> um, Sia, I saw you in your hand. I believe having teachers of color, like any ethnicity or nationality is very important, but also I believe um, having a teacher who is not of color be educated on colored things. If anyone understand what I'm trying to say here, like be educated on like why the student is coming to school with their hair wrapped or either why is the student switching up their hair every two weeks or anything like that. But um, also um, 
or why the student is acting like that because acting like how like how their personality is because I'm not going to say like oh all black homes like act the same but we have a lot of similarities in um how we act and how we were raised and teachers of non-colored don't so some of the things they wouldn't ever understand and I think that it'd be very important for them to educate themselves on that or either actually talk about problems that are going on in the world I mean I have this one teacher right now and he actually speaks about like you know the like Black Lives Matters things that is going on or like he says oh if anything is going on you can reach out to him he doesn't just like push it over he actually speaks about it and well, not sympathize, but kind of sympathize with us saying, if you need anything at all to reach out to him. And I appreciate that about him a lot. I would like it if many other teachers did that as well. Rakam, I see your hand up. Um, I just wanted to add really quickly. Um, so this is a very interesting study uh, by the, I think it's the National Institute of Education. Um, and they talk a lot about the benefits of having teachers of color. Um, and one of the benefits that they outline is the fact that teachers of color are less likely to uh, report black students as being uh, rowdy or disorderly. And I think that's really important because I think that um, a lot of times, uh, especially at the high school level, um, some of the cultural things uh, that people of color exhibit are not understood um, by white teachers. And I think that having more teachers that understand um, cultural and procedural differences between uh, different students of different backgrounds is really um, beneficial. Hey, Yana. I just like to easily agree with that. Um, Cause like I said, um, the just little things that seem unimportant, but are to the student. For example, um, like Shanisha was saying about hair, um, there were a couple of times where teachers had taken it upon themselves to comment on my hair, um, which is great. It's, it's nice when someone's like, oh, you change your hair, it's nice, it's pretty, um, and that sort of thing. But it becomes stuff where it's like, oh, is that your real hair? Yes, it is, thank you. Um, like they're just, they're little things that kind of make you uncomfortable and they're not things that you really want to explain, but it's difficult to put into words. And it just creates these little awkward moments of discomfort that a lot of time you don't know what to do with them. Anybody else? Uh, Maureen, I see your hand. Um. The whole cultured part, like all teachers should become cultured, cultured is very important um, because I feel like us black girls, our hair is a very important aspect of our bodies. You know, like we take pride in it and we take care of it. And sometimes like I don't feel like doing it. So the way my hair is right now, I go to school like that sometimes. So I feel like they should know, you know, like I don't know, like, I feel like they should be cultured, you know, about it. And especially, I'm sorry, I'm getting lost in my words. But I feel like sometimes, yeah, it is uncomfortable. Like when you ask, oh, can you take it off or like do rags and stuff like that, stuff like that. And I feel like with the whole do rags thing, not everybody that wears do rags are gangsters, you know? Like, I feel like they think that sometimes, like, oh, no, take off your do-rag because that's not allowed in school. But, like, sometimes girls wear do-rags, too, and I feel like we should be comfortable with what we wear and we don't have to dress, like, a certain type of way because sometimes it's just, like, our culture and that's just how we are, you know? So, yeah. Sam? I agree with what everyone else was saying about how um, having a teacher who has, like, a similar background to you can make you feel more comfortable because, like... So I'm Haitian and in my household, like grades are super important. Like anything under an A, like don't even think about getting it. So I feel like when I get, when I'm like struggling with a class or something, I like to talk to someone who like will understand me a little bit better. Like maybe a teacher who's also Haitian and they're like more willing to give you advice on what to do or like how to even approach your parent about it. I feel like little things like that just like make you feel a lot better. Gotcha. Um, I definitely agree with everyone. Um, 
and I think it's uh, I think it's good for us to be able to teach the teachers sometimes, you know, nobody ever said that anything was wrong with that, you know, sometimes if we feel like we say, you know, um, they should be more cultured with it, we can help them out, you know, sometimes if they're confused about something, we can let them know like, hey, hey, this is why I wear my hair this way, this is why, and it's really about how they take that, like if they want to take that information in and then use it with other students and learn from that, um, I think I think letting letting them know and teaching them about our culture and everything like that will um, help in having more teachers understand it. Um, Sharncia? Um, I want to add on that, like, I feel as if teachers should stop grouping students as well. Like, oh, this group is this way, this group acts this way. And it's just like, just because I look a certain way does not mean that is how I am going to act towards you or either just because I am a black female student does not mean I'm going to either get, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to also be grouping students as well, but students at Brockton High who like, if I say, oh, if I don't either agree on something with a teacher, they automatically think I'm going to just like get upset and start like flipping tables and stuff like that. And it's like, no, I'm not like that. I just really want to have a conversation to you with, I mean, I'm sorry, with you. Why are you already sending me to the office? Like, it's not like, it's not like just because I'm, just because we are having conversation doesn't mean my voice is going to get loud or I'm going to start yelling. No, it's not like that. It's just, I want to have a conversation with you. And it's kind of upsetting when a teacher is just like, oh, well, you can just go to the office with that. And it's like, why are you already sending me to the office? I haven't even said what I wanted to say yet. And it's not as if like, I'm ever going to get disrespectful with a teacher because I would never, that's not how I was raised. But I was also taught if I have something to say, I should communicate what I want to say instead of just sending me to the office. And then it's making me look terrible in front of my parents because then it's like, oh, why were you talking back to the teacher? And it's like, it's not even like that. I was really just trying to have a conversation. That's never happened to me partic particularly, but I've seen it happen to so many students and it's just like the teacher could have had that conversation and that could have been settled in the classroom. Yeah. Um, it's interesting how each of you guys keep talking about discipline and being culturally competent and like the teacher making sure to like really know you and know your culture. Um, when I started teaching, I taught mainly Latino students and I myself am Latina. And I remember one student, so my mom's in the Dominican Republic. So sometimes we use a lot of facial expressions. We don't necessarily talk with our words. And one of the teachers called a student, we had like a demerit merit system. So after a certain amount of merits, he got kicked out. Um, and the teacher called on the student and the student did one of, I, I can't really do it, but it's, it's done a lot. It's like, kind of like this, like, you know, like kind of saying, what's up? Like, what do you want? <laughs> um, and she took offense to it, but she like reflected at that moment. And she's like, you know what? Instead of giving him a demerit, let me ask. And she asked me and I was like, oh yeah, that's normal. When we do that, we're just saying, what's up? What do you want? Que lo que kind of deal. And she's like, oh, thank God I didn't give him a demerit. So I'm glad that you guys are expressing that because a lot of times, right, we misinterpret because that may not be known in our own culture or known in our own um, circle of friends. Um, Fetcher, we'll continue with you. Sorry, I forgot to put my hand down again. Oh, no worries, Ayana. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it really comes down to um, being in control of your biases um, and acknowledging that they exist, um, I think, that is a big part of it, just acknowledging that it exists because everyone's a little bit biased and just working through it is what's important. Um, like I said, we could go on and on about things that had happened. Like you just explained one that is so simple um, that easily becomes an issue. But um, what Shanisha was saying earlier connects to what I was saying, what I was saying before, that there isn't a way for students to respectfully raise an issue. Um, I personally get in trouble for this all the time because I'll be in class and I'll be like, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. 
Um, and the, the minute I disagree in any way, shape or form with my teacher, I'm being disrespectful. And what that feels like is like, okay, so I just can't say anything is I just can't say anything. Um, for example, um, I had a teacher, um, like a substitute who tried to tell the class that you weren't allowed to have your coat in class, um, which isn't true. Um, you're not allowed to wear your coat in school, but there's no way for you to not have your coat in class and be able to go out during recess when you're required to have a coat when it's a certain weather. Um, and because of how big Brockton High is, you can't go to your locker, get your coat and be in lunch in time. It doesn't, it doesn't work. So the general, and the general thing is you can wear certain types of sweaters because Brockton High is cold sometimes, um, but you can't wear your coat, but you can carry it with you. Um, but the teacher tried to, this, this substitute teacher tried to pass it off as like a rule and he was threatening to send people to the office. And I was like, I don't even know where my locker is. Um, and that's not a rule in the handbook. You, you can't, you, you just made up a rule. Um, so I, I don't know what you would like me to do. And that was automatically disrespect. And he lectured me in front of the class for being disrespectful. And as a student, um, that frustrates me to no end. Um, and it is very easy for me to lose my temper and say something that I shouldn't. And then now I'm in detention for something and I'll be called disrespectful. I shouldn't have started an argument with my teacher, but I, I wasn't trying to argue with my teacher. I really was just trying to say like, I, it's not a rule in the handbook and I, I don't know where my locker is. I, I cannot um, comply with your request because I don't have the means to do so. Um, and just one interaction like that kind of ruins everything for me. Cause I'm just, now I'm just kind of like, okay, so I can't say anything without risking insulting a teacher. And um, as most of us to say in our culture, you don't disrespect your elders. There's no if, and, or, but, you just, you don't. Um, the elders always right. So if you go home with a phone call or a detention that says, oh, well, she started an argument with her teacher. There's no, you don't get to explain that. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get to say, um, hey mom. So what had happened, it, it doesn't matter because you, disrespected a teacher, you disrespected your elder, specifically an elder who's there to protect you and teach you. And that's just not accepted. Um, so then it becomes, so I cannot speak up without risking retribution. Um, and then you get that students just suffering in silence and then that toxic culture that everyone wants to talk about um, where students don't trust teachers, they don't talk to the teachers and they don't like their teachers. Um, and then it just kind of goes in this circle of teachers feeling of like students versus teachers, which doesn't create a very good learning environment. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any other comments for question number four? Okay, so our last question um, is, what do you hope to get from participating in this panel or working with this subcommittee? Rick um, So something that Ms. Wolder talks a lot about is leaving a legacy. Um, and I think that's really important. Um, a lot of the things that might be changed or tweet uh, as a result of what I'm saying might not be uh, directly pertinent to me, but it's important that the people that come after me, the students that follow me will have the opportunity to have a more uh, diverse and inclusive uh, learning environment. So I think that's that's really what I hope to gain, um, a, a legacy. Thank you. Gotcha. I think mine is similar to Kim's. I just, um, I wanna see change actually happen because you know, sometimes we could, we could always talk about this stuff. We could always say what we think is wrong, what we think um, we're doing wrong. But if, if nothing actually changes, what we're talking about, like, it really doesn't matter because nothing is changing, you know? So um, once, once we actually see change, I think that's when, I think that's when things will get rolling and yeah. Hey, um, like, I, I agree with both of them. Um, for me, it's, I, I wanna see solutions. Um, 
I can sit all day um, and complain about every terrible thing under the sun that I don't like about school, but that's not going to change it for me or my friends um, or for my little brother who's going to be at the high school in what, half a decade? So it, it comes down to making it better for somebody else um, and finding solutions for problems. Um, I'll never, I personally will never be okay with people suffering in silence. I don't think anyone should ever suffer in silence. Um, and I feel like a lot of that is happening, happens with youth because we're constantly being told that we're too young to know what we're talking about um, or that we're stepping out of our lane or um, a lot of time in black culture, they tell you um, that you should stay in a child's place. Um, and I feel like it's important for us to redefine what a child's place is. Um, there is a difference between um, questioning an adult and challenging them. Um, and I wanna question adults. I wanna question the system so that we can change it and make it better for everybody. Um, I saw Maureen and Sh Sharncia, you had your hand up as well. Okay. Go ahead, Maureen. Um, wait, what was the question? Sorry. No, no worries. What do you hope to get from participating in this panel or working with this subcommittee? Okay, um, I agree with everybody. I would like to see change, um, especially with the mental health, you know, like kids these days. Like I see depression a lot more than I did like three years ago, five years ago from kids my own age, you know, and kids even younger. And I'm just like, wow, like that's terrible, you know? So I feel like that is something that I would like to see change. And like Ayana said, what did she say again? Um, yeah, I forgot what she said, but she said a good point, and I feel like that should happen too. So, yeah. Um, Sharncia? Um, tagging along to what everybody has said, change is needed um, in our school system, change to help the students more often instead of just disciplining them, change with the way that the students are taught because a lot of students are either not coming to class because, oh, class is boring, class is this. And like some teachers are just, are just like, oh, they don't wanna learn. And what if, what if it's like, that's not the case? What if it's just how you're approaching your students isn't how they need to be approached. And I know that not everyone can be pleased because Brockton High is full of 4,000 students. But um, I feel as if, if a majority can be um, taught the way they need to, then it would help a lot. And also I would like to see more opportunities like this because um, this was brought to me by Maureen and I'm like forever thankful for that because I can see that I am going to be a part of something huge. And I'm glad that I was able to actually partake in something like this. And I would like to see for other students to be able to have this type of opportunity as well. Um, Anthony and then Marie. Well, um, uh, uh, what was the question again? Sorry. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> you guys are good at advocating, huh? <laughs> what do you hope to get from participating in this panel or working with this subcommittee? What I would like to receive for working with this committee would be more of getting my voice out and then helping other people try to get their voice out, like joining this committee or just speaking out to the committee so they can help out their friends and their future family members or anyone else that's coming up to the high school or any of the schools. Because if we don't start making change now, then they're going to have to deal with the problem that we have dealt with. And then they're going to have to step up and try to change when we could just fix this problem now and help them out so they won't have to worry and just get better education and overall health and et cetera. Yeah. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. San? I'm hoping to get out of the subcommittee, like, um, a more comfortable learning environment, uh, a place where like students feel comfortable to ask questions or even just turn their camera on in front of the class because it is a little intimidating to turn your camera on in front of like 20 black screens because you don't really know who's behind them and you haven't created that bond that usually actual classrooms have. So I just hope that 
virtual learning or even hybrid learning becomes a more comfortable space. Maureen, you had your hand up. I'm not sure if you wanted to say something. No, you're all good. All right. So if nobody has anything to add, I wanted to open it up to those on the subcommittee to ask any questions or any comments they may have. And then if you guys are comfortable, we can open it up to any of the guests that are here. If that's okay. Hi guys, how are you? Very nice comments. Um, I have a question on a scale of one to 10, 10 being um, good, how would you rate the overall quality of teachers at the high school from freshman to you know whatever grade you are now? Um, Rakem? Um, I would say a six, uh, if, if five is average, um, because I think that there are definitely a lot of excellent teachers, um, in our school system, but I also do feel like there are a lot of teachers within our school system that are apathetic to, uh, the needs of their students. Um, and I think that that is a shame because we have a very, we have, we have a chance in Brockton to be really, really great. Uh, we have so many different ideas and people from a lot of different backgrounds. And, and I wish that more teachers were interested in pushing students to their fullest uh, capabilities. And would, would, would the, uh, the other students agree with that or? You all seem to think a six? Um, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say six. Um, I'm not particularly good at math. Um, but um, I don't like averaging much because I feel like it, it cuts short some teachers. Um, I feel like my best connections with adults have been through my teachers. Um, I think a lot of who I am is um, in part due to my teachers. I have a teacher from middle school that I email every two to three months um, and I haven't seen her in four years. Um, and I just keep contact with her because she is an important mentor to me um, and our a relationship is what I think is the epiphany of what a student or mentor and in, in student is supposed to be. Um, but I, I, I have also had experiences with teachers who have made me cry. Um, I have friends right now who are crying because of the actions of their teachers. So I would rate those teachers a zero. Um, and teachers like the teacher I still keep contact with a 10. Um, I feel like it's it's much too difficult to try to rate them all the same number because it, it cuts too many of them short. There are some amazing teachers in this school system um, and they are the most supportive um, and they will challenge you. If, if classwork isn't good enough for you, they'll, they'll make a whole new lesson for you. Teachers who will stay after with you or speak to you at eight o'clock at night to go over something. Um, teachers that'll go step by step with you. Um, Teachers that'll play with you and learn your favorite candies to pass out during class or give you book recommendations. Um, so I think it, it comes down to um, that there, there are many different teachers and every teacher teaches differently. Um, and they all have their own unique way of um, reaching out to you, which is why I don't think giving one number would be beneficial. Hmm. Okay, well, I mean, for us to try to get a handle on if there is a problem, you know, at Brockton High School, that's why I'm trying to, overall, I'm not saying um, that there aren't good teachers. There certainly are good teachers, but if, if there's a far too uh, many number that the student body feels is um, you know, not performing uh, in a manner that is beneficial for your education, then I think the school committee needs to know that. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, on a scale of one to 10, the overall experience at Brockton High um, would give us sort of an idea as to, you know, where things might be. Um, so that's just one thing to think about. The other thing I was thinking about is, um, what, did you, what would you, um, how would you take to um, an opportunity once every two weeks in class, in a class for let's say 15 minutes to have like a round table with the class and your teacher Mm -hmm. as a, as a non-judgmental but uh, opportunity to sort of voice uh, student concerns about you know the class and um, 
uh, just an opportunity to basically say, hey, what, what's working and what's not working, you know, and get the opinion of the students with, with no basically, you know, sort of a free for all, no judgment, but just, you know, an opportunity for 15 minutes every two weeks, just so it's sort of a self-assessment for the class and for the instructor to, you know, maybe um, put some things in play that uh, might not have been considered to make things more effective for, you know, the students of the class. So, Mr. Mancello, I know you had um, Rakem and Fetcher wanted to answer your first question. Oh, great. Okay. If you guys want to add to the second one. Oh, sure. Feel great. Good. Good. So, Fetcher, go ahead. Uh, answer the second question? Uh, the first one, I, I guess, first. Okay. Um, for the first one, um, I'd say I'd rate it about an eight. and oh. But I definitely agree with um, Ayana with the point that, you know, we have a lot of teachers. So it's like um, each, each teacher can provide a different experience. So um, I see what she means when she says that um, it's kind of hard to – base it on one uh, number. And for the second question, um, the round table, I definitely agree with that too, because um, students can have something different to say every two weeks, you know? So it's like, they could have a problem one week and then something else could happen that they want to voice the next week. So I, de um, I definitely think that idea would be helpful in voicing their frustrations. Ken? Um, I think a round table would be really, really cool. Um, I think that if we were to do something like that, it would be beneficial to have it be student led um, so that students are able to advocate for what they need um, and have an opportunity to lead themselves, but also other students. Um, I'm also on the Mayor's Youth Council and uh, the Mayor's Youth Council is student led and I think that works really well. Um, so I think that's an idea that could be used for this. Um, Ayan? I think a round table is an amazing idea, um, especially if it was required, it was a requirement for every class, no matter the level, um, because I feel like that would make a, that would get your um, students feeling like they had a voice. Um, that's something you can't really deny. Um, if there was a time given to you, like we want to hear what you think about class and how you feel, um, where you can sit at that round table where it's all even and have that respectful conversation with your teacher about issues. I think that would be extremely beneficial. And, and also would give the teacher an opportunity to, for you to say what is working. So perhaps, you know, um, it could be more of what is working and, um, you know, less of sort of what is not working. Um, you know, just, you know, it, it's a good opportunity, I think, to let the instructor know the good and the bad, and that way things can be tailored to more good rather than, you know, eliminate the stuff that you think is ineffective or, you know, not, uh, not beneficial for the uh, overall instruction. Um, Son, I'm not sure if you had your hand up for the questions that Mr. Minicello asked. Um, I think that the round table is a really good idea. Uh, I feel like it would give people like the opportunity to just say what they think is good in class and what's not. Like for me, for example, I've been like struggling with, um, I think the platform is called Mathia, uh, having to like go in different paces with my class and like everyone's learning at a different thing. And then, I mean, at a different pace and then having to come back to the actual class and learn like a differently new, an entirely new lesson is a little, it's like not working for me. So I feel like being able to express this to like um, my teachers would be great. Um, Anthony? I believe the round table idea is an awesome idea because our students can come out to teachers and say that they would need help more with this problem instead of this problem. Then the teacher can maybe after school or send emails or texts to the students explaining how to do this or where they need help in and how to, you know, understand it. And to agree, I believe what Fetcher said, that new students have problems probably every, a new problem every other week. And it would be a great idea for the teachers just to overall uh, talk with the students. Marie? 
I feel like the panel would be a good idea also, but I feel like we have to make sure that teachers are willing to do it at the same time, because sometimes, you know, it's whatever happens in the class, it stays in the class, and then you go home and you do what I told you to do, you know, sometimes it's like that attitude, so I feel like we should make sure that they're willing to have the after school talks and actually take what we say under consideration. And I remember in my in the last meeting, Ms. Walder said that I should not only talk about what's the problem, but also come up with a solution, you know, to it. So I feel like we should do that also, like give them advice on what we think could help them because they're also stressed. They're probably just as stressed as we are too, you know, and they probably can't come up with everything on their own. So I feel like that's a good idea. Miss Walder gives a lot of good advice. She gives a lot of good advice to the school committee too. So she's, she's, she's been a very good, uh, a good person who's got a good head on her shoulders and can relate to everybody. So yeah, I see what you're saying about Miss Walder. So she's a good resource, that's for sure. I'll send you your check in the mail, Sharon, for that. <laughs> um, Mr. Rodriguez, not to put you on the spot, but do you have any questions or comments? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, great topics, um, a lot of information. Um, and I'm sure moving forward with this committee, which uh, um, should have been in place you know, many, many years ago, um, we get the ball rolling and um, as a school committee member and the school district can look at uh, ways of, of coming up with a strategic plan to diversify our teaching um, troops or armies, if you want to call it, um, to reflect our students. Um, I was in your shoes. Uh, I went through the school system. I was in the bilingual program, um, you know, first three years of, of grade school. And, you know, I had teachers that, that looked like me, you know, because obviously, you know, in the bilingual program, you know, learning how to speak English, it was kind of weird, though, um, you know, being born in the United States and you're in a bilingual program, but you still speak English properly. So I still don't understand that to this day. Um, at the high school, um, I can't even recall who, you know, as far as a minority teacher, to be honest with you, and, and it's only been a little bit over 20 years since I left there. Um, but, the, you know, work definitely needs to be done. Um, I mean, you, sh you know, a lot of the answers that, you know, the examples that you guys have been telling us, it's, uh, you shouldn't feel that way. And uh, hopefully we can uh, target that and, and making sure that, you know, every student in the school district feels comfortable um, walking into school and feeling comfortable to, you know, talk to, you know, to a teacher that, that looks like them or a staff member. Um, I just want to, you know, applaud every one of you for taking the time to, you know, address everything to us and hopefully we can gather more information moving forward. I don't know if I can open it up to anybody else or does it just stay within the um, committee? Mayor Sullivan, can you help me with that? Madam Chairman, thank you, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Minicello. Uh, but I want to thank each and every one of you. Um, I mean, you're the next generation, and, and to, to listen and learn is to be an effective leader. Um, and I know the superintendent and myself and the school committee members and administration are definitely listening to you. And some of the things that I took away from the conversation is we need positive change, all-inclusive, but solutions-driven. Um, and, and really, uh, as, as a white guy, a 50-year-old white guy, I haven't had the experiences that you have had, and that's a fact, and the same thing for Mike Thomas. So to be able to figure out how we can create change, uh, Ayana, you said that you, know, you have a, a, a brother that you know, in half a decade will be a Brockton High. Um, so you know, that's the plateau. Um, and unfortunately, this is what Mr. Rodriguez said, this is long overdue. So I want to thank um, Ms. Ms. Mendez um, for her leadership on this. And of course, Dr. Moran and, and Dr. Walder. And we need to continue this and round tables and seat at the tables and listening and learning. And age is just a number, right? But what you go through every day is what we as leaders in the community uh, need to hear because you will be the future leaders in this. 
don't leave Brockton. Don't leave Brockton. We need to be a great community, as Mr. Johnson said, right? Greatness can be achieved, but it can only be achieved by working together, agree to disagree, but get to the point of understanding and comforting each other to take it to the level that Brockton is, because Brockton is a wonderful community, but it can be better and it will be better. Thank you again, everybody. Ms. Mendez, I, um, I just wanna thank all the students here tonight for their honesty. Uh, and that's the most important part, so I really appreciate that. Um, and I thank you and the committee for actually, for starting this committee, the Committee on Equity, Race, Diversity, Inclusion is uh, something that the school district has never had. And the incoming executive director of equity, diversity and inclusion is something else the school system has never had. And, um, and uh, with this committee, that position and the work uh, that Ms. Wolder and Dr. Moran um, continue to do um, with the staff, um, it's it is, again, listening to the students, how important it is for us to continue um, our bias training. Uh, so we all recognize um, the bias within us because uh, until we can do that, we really can't lead effective conversations and talk to each other about uh, changes that need to be made. So that's my job along with the executive team and our, our leaders across the district is to make sure that, you know, we're all providing the training that's needed. So we all can look at our own bias so we can actually move forward uh, to make the school system work for everyone. Um, and I really appreciate all the students being here. I appreciate Mrs. Mendez for you setting up this forum um, I look forward to many more of these as we move forward. And then when we have our new executive director on board, uh, it will really help drive the work. Uh, the feedback we're getting from you and, and many more students will really help drive the work of the new Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, but it will also help to drive the work of the superintendent as well. So I really appreciate your honesty uh, and I look forward to many more of these. And just to add to that, thank you, um, Superintendent Thomas or Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. To Ms. Walder, um, it wouldn't have been able if it wasn't for her and her reaching out to teachers who recommended um, these students. So thank you. Ayana, I see your hand up. Do you have a comment? Um, I just like to say everyone can <laughs> say thank you to us. Um, so I want to say thank you back um, because um, just because something should be done doesn't mean it always is what gets done. Um, so it, it, it's one thing for us to be invited to a committee, um, but it's another thing for all of you who I know are busy and have 101 things to do um, for you to show up and even more important to hear you respond to the things that we say. Um, because every single one of you who just spoke um, specifically referenced things that we pointed out um, and could you could name us too, which means you were listening. Um, and it's that little thing that feels really nice because I know that I, I didn't, I didn't waste my time tonight. Um, I was heard, I had a voice, um, and the people who were elected to represent me, um, and elected to help me are going to, um, and that means a lot. And it makes me want to speak again and come back. And that is something that you created and not everyone can. So you deserve just as much thanks as we do. Thank you. So um, I'm afraid our meeting has come to an end. There's about eight minutes. Um, so I just wanted to open up to our last point in the agenda. If nobody else has anything to say, I don't wanna cut it short before anybody really wants to say something. Okay, so our last point was other business. I don't know if we have anything under other business. All right, well, I just want, once again, want to um, reiterate everything that has been said. Um, I want to thank you guys for being part of this space. Um, again, I hope we can continue to have these conversations, not just to have them, but to use them as ways to make changes in our system and the way things are going. And um, just thank you for your brilliance, for your, for your beautiful selves of being here and for everybody else, like Ayana said, that are not part of the subcommittee and is still supporting us in this subcommittee. Um, so uh, if there's no other, anything under business, I guess we can close this meeting.
Thank you so much once again. So um, I don't know if there's a, um, if we can. Have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Minicello. <laughs> He's second before, but, but before we do that, I think that we just want to make sure the students know that, you know, the school committee certainly has listened to what you're saying. And now, now the school committee and the superintendent and um, the administration will talk about next steps and things that, um, uh, that we take from this meeting. So we will be, we will be dice. We will be basically listen, listening to what you said and, and seeing what we can do to um, implement some things to, address some of those concerns so um, so now i guess we'll do a motion to adjourn second all in favor bye guys thank you very much <laughs>